Hello, the internet, Tim and Steve from Manus Group. Hey guys, Brad Costello and Casey Jackson here, bringing you another behind the scenes video. This week, we are cracking into a box of Hour of Devastation, which should be fun. Yeah, we'll be What's fun. in the box? Yeah, we'll find out. Hopefully yeah. an invocation or a foil uh, nickelback. Yeah, definitely, and I would like to see some gods. Uh, before we get started, big thank you to Ultra Pro. Without them, this episode just wouldn't be made. Uh, great mats, great sleeves. We all know how important it is to protect your cards, and we all know how much we like to kind of personalize our magic experience, you know, playing on the Scarab God, playing on the Locust God. So it's be fun. sure to check out their stuff. Yeah. Um, how was your uh, pre-release? My pre-release wasn't bad. Thanks in part to you in Austin, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We, we went and did the midnight pre-release at uh, our local game store that we really love, Paper Heroes, here in Van Nuys on Burbank. Um, and I had the good fortune, in hindsight, the great fortune of playing our director, Austin Herring, in round one and the wonderful, fluffy-headed Casey Jackson in round two with my red-black aggro build. Casey, how was that deck I put together? Whatever, bro. It yeah, was, it was fun. Not bad. Glory bringer. It's a medium, <laughs> it's a medium card. Yeah, pretty much what we learn is in limited, aggro stompy, it just wins. I, I ran a red black aggressive deck. It had 11, 1, 2, and 3 drop creatures, 2, 4 drops, Chaos Maw and Glory bringer at the top end, and 8 removal spells. It was just fast, fast, fast degenerate. Anytime something got in my way, I was able to remove it. And then on the few games I had in the four rounds where I actually lasted until I was dropping five and six drops, you just drop Chaos Maw, wipe the board, drop Glorybringer, take out the creature that you're having trouble with. It is really... It was good. Yeah, it was just... Good. It was Honestly, it was kind of a boring deck to build in that it's a new set. I wanted to build something different. I wanted to get a god to build around. I wanted to get Nickelback and, and, and try a three-color build just hoping to, to ramp and curve into a seven drop. And... And I just built a straightforward limited bomb aggro uh, with some bombs at the end. Well, I can tell you why you didn't open a god. So uh, I did a couple of pre-releases. On Sunday, I went to Emerald Knights over in Burbank. Where we shot episode one. Yeah, another great game store. If you ever want to you know, play us, those are the two spots to come, come find us. Uh, the reason you didn't open a god, my friend Stephanie, she uh, opened two gods and an invocation. So it all went to her. Well, yeah. I, I have many inappropriate words I'd like to say to Stephanie so congrats you mm. yeah. you want to do this box? yeah we definitely want to crack box, into this man. box we want to see how things are going um, so I went 4-0 in our first pre-release the midnight one uh, did you end up 3-1 at the uh, midnight? Uh, no no I didn't oh that stinks yeah. what, did, what yeah, else yeah. did you run into? Uh, I'm not being good at magic. Uh, I just, a uh, couple, couple misplays right there. It's something about about 3.30, like my focus, I just, you start missing those triggers, and uh, my, my mental game just kind of fell apart after that. But hey, I had a good time, and you know, what else are you going to do? Pretty understandable. Oh, I did open a Samut. That's what I... That's right. <laughs> you got the Samut, but you didn't get him out against me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank goodness. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do one. I'm just going to crack this guy open. Let's just do one of these. Yeah. Let's take a look. So I also did the Saturday pre-release, which was really cool because there was a great mix. There were kids there. There were casual players. There were some of the seasoned vets that I play with all the time at Paper oh, Heroes. Okay, cool. This is actually a very cool card to start with. Hour of Promise. And, and the reason, uh, uh, I, the reason I, I want to bring it up is because I think a lot of people think this card is really garbage. And I actually think that in a Deserts Matter deck, this, this card actually becomes... Maybe a little bu a little busted. So, it's uh, four and a green sorcery. Search your library for up to two land cards. Put them into the battlefield tapped. And if you control three or more deserts, create two two uh, black zombie creature tokens. Yeah. So it just it not only ramps you, and again, it doesn't ramp you until you're at five mana. But it ramps you, and when you do the the desert build, it's ramp plus you get two creatures. And, and that's a pretty powerful combination. Yeah. Um, especially as there are deserts that become manlands. So you could literally, in that play, get a three or four creature swing with one spell. Now, Casey, do you think that that's pick one-able? Do I in your pick pack? one-able? Well, in your pack. Uh, well, I mean, here's the thing. There's a couple of other really good things in here. Open fire. And uh, the other thing that I was always, I'm always looking at, there's a bunch of good stuff in here. But uh, overcome as well, which is, you know, overrun. 
basically. Yeah, plus all your creatures get plus two, plus two, and trample till the end of turn. It is just a win con in a green deck or two or three yeah. color deck with green. Uh, the rare in my deck was one of the split cards. It's Driven to Despair. Uh, the sorcery, or the main portion, Driven, says until the end of turn, creatures I control gain trample and whenever this creature deals damage to a player, draw a card. And it's one in a green. And then the aftermath is Despair, which says until the end of turn, creatures I control gain menace and whenever this creature deals damage, draw a card. So basically, in back-to-back -back turns, if I have multiple creatures, I'm going to be able to swing, get damage in, and draw multiple cards. So this card is absolutely first pickable, especially in a pack that really, other than Aerial Guide, which is solid, Feral yeah. Prowler, which is solid, and Supreme Will, if I want to try and do a, yeah. a control build. But yeah, not, not anything else in terms of yeah. first pick. There's no question. Yeah, I, No, so to answer your question, no. Our Promise is not first, is not my, would not be my first pick, but I do, I would <laughs> like to play with it. I do think it would be a, a fun one. Well, let me ask you this. In any circumstances, are you taking Open Fire first? O over, o Just, uh, Overcome? It, Yes, over overcome. Have, do you, are you ever sitting there in builds uh, and you prioritize removal? Uh, I do prioritize removal, but I like I actually really like green in this set more than I expected myself to. So I think I'm going to lean towards the overcome over the open fire. I agree with you completely. Just open fire. It's it's a lightning bolt that costs two and a red, but instant speed, three damage a creature or player. You never go wrong drafting removal. If my midnight yeah. pre-release taught you yeah. anything. Um, so yeah, Open Fire is another card we'd consider, but I think we, we both agree. Yeah. Uh, overcome and Driven to Despair would be pick one. Let's check another pack. Let's do it, man. So you mentioned that you went to a Sunday pre-release at Emerald Knights. I, I couldn't do that one. How did you and your friends do? Oh, so I won uh, my first two matches in four games, which was nice. And then I lost four games in a row, uh, which is sad because I mulliganed to five four times in a row and <laughs> oh. just could not... Uh, and I think again, it just goes back to like maybe I gotta examine my shuffling. I gotta examine my my mana base. I just listen yeah. thematically. The gods were not in your favor. Yeah, That's just how do. just how it works. All right. So in pack two, I got a really interesting choice. All right. I got Liliana's defeat, which is destroy target black creature or planeswalker. Great sideboard. Card. It, it is a great sideboard card. Great Certainly sideboard. not pick oneable, but I have two cards that are. My uncommon is Sifter Worm, or one of my uncommons. It's five green green. It's expensive, but it's a seven seven trampler. And when it comes into or when it enters the battlefield, you scry three, then reveal the top card of my library. You gain life equal to that card CMC. Yeah. So when you get to seven mana, holy hell, a seven seven trampler, scry three, and then gain a bunch of life. Oh, this, yeah. this is a bomb. But the other card I got is something else that I would consider. It's Torment of Hailfire. And Jesus' card, if you get it at the right time, is broken. It's X black black. Repeat the following process X times. Each opponent loses three life unless they discard a card or sacrifice a non-land permanent. So if I cast this for five, you're either... Three separate times you have to repeat this. And if you have no cards in hand, you're choosing between losing nine life, sacrificing three non-land permanents. It just... Is there really any scenario where it's not an instant power shift in, in your game? Well, I, I was able to play with uh, Torment at the pre-release and against Sifter at, at the pre-release. So with uh, the, the Torment late game, really quite excellent. I was playing against a guy who had gained a bunch of life with Sifter. So he ended up taking, sacking a couple of guys that I had disabled with removal but were still on the board. Discarded a little bit. So it did make... A small impact in that game, it actually won me another another game. Got with the Sifter, I saw a busted combo with uh, uh, Vizier of Deferment. So he was able to swing with the Sifter, do some damage, also with the Scry, bounce up, do it again, was up like you know ten life, and that swing was just uh, right. And and you it. have you have cards that blink in this set. Yeah. You have the Angel that that can exile oh, yeah. for a turn. So I Sifter like Worm, game. there's some there's some combinations where Sifter Worm is just. It's a win con also. Yeah. So in this case, I, I think you could make a case for either one pick one. I think I would lean Sifter Worm. I think it's more yeah. straightforward. Again, again, it's like with this green stuff. I mean, like look at these first few packs between uh, Overcome, Driven, Hour of Promise, Sifter Worm. I mean, if you're busting out Sifter Worm on turn, you know, five, 
you know, with some ramp, I think that would feel just absolutely broken. Just yeah, I mean, it, it's busted. just to feel bad for your opponent. And and honestly, the first three packs, the best cards we got, green. all green black. Yeah, all green black. Yeah. So. Uh, not un, not uncommon. Yeah. Green, black, red. I mean, these are really strong colors in this set. Once you crack one, yeah. see what you would take. Pick yeah. one. We'll do we'll do one more, then we'll just kind of dig into these, dig into the rest of this box. That sounds good. Yeah. Let's take a look here. Wow, yeah, I like those cycle lands. Oh man. Oh, we, oh wow, this is a really good pack. So we got a, a dream stealer. I'm really digging this card. This uh, has really performed well. It's uh, a menace black that uh, allows you to force your opponent to discard. We got the Ramadap Ruins. It's the land that lets you sack, uh, sack deserts and shock your opponent. Really digging that guy. And Bane Whip Punisher, another black card that comes and puts a negative 1-1 one, one counter, and then you can sack it and destroy any creature that has a counter on it. Really dig these cards. This is definitely a... Uh, a tough pick. I'm gonna go with. Wow. Uh, I I think the cor I think the correct pick is the Bane Whip Punisher, but I would probably pick the uh, Dream Stealer. Yeah, I think I'm going Dream Stealer all the time, yeah. especially because it has Eternalize, so you get it twice. Yeah. All right. I, so again, more more black. Yeah. yeah, black and green. And guess what? The rare in my pack is Bantu's Last Reckoning. This is a card that is amazing when you want it and kind of terrible when you don't. <laughs> it's one black, black. It's a black Wrath of God. It's Damnation, but your lands don't untap at the start of your next upkeep, or the start of your next untap phase, I should say. Um, now, board wipes, this is the kind of thing that I would normally just snap pick. Yeah, yeah. First but time. let's say that you've been having a draft like ours, and you are in... Black green. Okay, that's you're, great. You're gold berry. It. Well, I also got the obelisk spider. Oh. It's a one four for one black and green. It's a one four reach. Whenever it deals combat damage to a creature, you put a permanent minus one minus one counter on that creature. Oh yeah. Which so, means if you combine that with that bane whip, you could just anything that that spider has touched right. is could be toast. Well, even better. Whenever you put one or more minus one minus one counters on a creature, each opponent gets drained of one life, so they lose a life and you gain a life. Now we also know that you're still getting Amonkhet in with your draft, uh, and there's the Vizier. Oh yeah. Which puts yeah. minus one counters. So this spider has some seriously strong minus one, minus one synergy in this set. So I think you could make an argument for either. Oof, My tough. guess is I take the board wipe, Yeah. because knowing that a board yeah. wipe is coming when your opponent doesn't is so huge, especially in a limited format. You just you know, go an extra turn or two, leaving cards in your hand while your opponent keeps casting creatures and getting what feels like a lead, and you're like, boom, clear everything. If I have a way to blink one of my cards or give something indestructible, now I have a board state and you don't. But Obelisk Spider in certain instances, it, I mean, there really are scenarios where it is the best card that you can, or one of the best cards you can get. Green Black is looking good. I say we just take a look through these, see if we can't, can't make something happen. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, this is actually another interesting pack. I want, to, I want to talk about these two. A braid, I think, is just a real solid piece of removal, and I wouldn't be surprised if it sees at least at least some consistent sideboard play outside of Limited. Absolutely. Uh, the other one is the God Pharaoh's Gift. So there is the the luxual, uh, the, one of the shrines from uh, Amiket. Amiket that allows you to tutor for the God Pharaoh's Gift for two and put it into play. And uh, if you guys aren't familiar with the God Pharaoh's Gift, it basically lets you take cards from your graveyard, creature cards from your graveyard, and put them into play as four four zombie uh, copies of, of that. And I feel like there's yeah. gonna somebody's gonna be tinkering around with this. There's some some brew to be had. It, it feels this. like a deck yeah. waiting to happen. It's just every single freaking turn another one comes yeah. in. Can you tell I ran up against one of these yeah. during uh, Flyers, Christmas weekend? Hex proof dudes, especially if you put that up with a cycling deck and you just dump a bunch of guys early on that uh that uh, who is that? The hexproof blue dude for oh seven. the five five yeah, even, even bring it back for uh, as a four four hexproof it's pretty such special. a pain in the butt beautiful look at the, and, the blood and the, like, the, the slums, lovely the full art the love like <laughs> all right that. so the rare in my my pack here is terrible it's eminent doom ooh it is ooh this is a card that ooh. I could see getting passed to you as the last card in the yep. pack it's, it's a full art so over every time so useless but guess what we got another overcome so that would probably be the pick. Or if you're doing 
the black green build and you need some more big cards uh even though it's a common oh. we got the five six tramp trample cycling rampaging hippo uh i don't know that i would pick it i'm pretty sure overcome would be the pick again but a solid green card uh, i think the theme continues this is actually a really good pack there's a uh... A bunch of good blue in here. There's the Spell Weaver, Spell Weaver Eternal, uh, the Sinuous Striker, and uh, Consigned to Oblivion. But uh, our rare is the Ramanap Excavator. It's uh, the Crucible geez. of Worlds guy. Now, in this pack, my rare was Endless Sands. It's one of the rare deserts oh. that lets you tuck creatures underneath it. Two, tap it, exile a creature, and then four, tap it, sacrifice Endless Sands, return all the creatures exiled under it back to play. This is a card I did run in my Desert Synergy deck, and I liked using it with Glorybringer because basically, because Glorybringer has haste, bring out Glorybringer, swing and exert him for four. Do four damage to a creature, get rid of it, four damage to my opponent's face, then end of turn, two, tuck it away under the Endless Sands, next turn, pay four, sack it, Glorybringer comes back, I get to do it all again. It avoids the one turn drawback. Uh, which makes Glorybringer just that much more of a win con. Yeah, I've also seen some uh, people uh, really just in a Red Blue Spells deck, they unsummon their own Glorybringer in response to removal and then exert it again second turn. I was just like, Absolutely. Oh, that's so mean. Any way that you can blink it, it's going to make it better. The uncommon in this pack that I think is interesting is Hope Tender. It's one in a green for a 2-2 two -two that for one, tap it, untap target land. So it can help you in a multicolor deck if you need, you know, if you have cards with double pips like Bontu's Reckoning and I need two black, but I only have one black source and I've gotten four forests, well, not a problem because I can tap a forest, tap Hope Tender, untap my swamp to get a second black mana. Uh, it's, and uh, that's going to work. Good on a fix. I got the uh, Sarcophagus, the one you were talking about, that lets you oh. cast cycle lands. I think... Uh, it lets you cast any yeah. card with cycle out of your graveyard. Now... Play mistakes were made in that tournament where my where the opponent didn't realize in the next round that when his creatures that had cycling died, they were exiled. Exiled. They didn't go yeah. back to the graveyard. So make sure you're aware and that your opponent's aware you can cycle cards into the graveyard, but if a cycler dies or gets removed from play, it gets exiled they, specifically to avoid something Am repeating and stupid. Ambuscade. Another... Uh uh, just beautiful piece of green removal. It's just super solid. All right, so in this pack, we're going away from black green. I got Dejeru with eyes open. It is a card that you want you want really badly if you have a Planeswalker because it's a 4-3 Vigilant Legendary Creature for 5 that says when he enters the battlefield, you can tutor for a Planeswalker card and put it into your hand. And furthermore, whenever damage is dealt to one of your Planeswalkers, reduce that damage by 1. Now, I did pull a Solemnity, which would shut down the whole green-black counters business because it, uh, well, that's exactly what that does. Yeah, it's, it, it, that card is going to get C play. It's a sideboard card, I think, in, in almost every format, certainly modern and standard. Oh, yeah, it's going to shut down the infect real, real quick. Real bad, yeah, so it, we're likely to see it all the way to Legacy uh, on the sideboard, so it'll be, it'll be value, but it's really nothing more than a sideboard card for a limited. Uh, my rare in this pack is Chaos Moth. 6-6 six, six for 5 red red. When it enters the battlefield, lightning bolt to every creature in play. So this is a... It really, for especially with... There's so many smaller creatures in this format. Chaos Maw is almost a board wipe. Yeah, yeah. And in that deck where I had the Glorybringer and Chaos Maw, it was just like, all right, I get to 7 mana, then I just, you know, sometimes... Oh, my opponent has a creature that's 7-7. Seven, seven. Fine. I'm going to... Use Electrolyze and deal four damage to it. Then I'm going to cast Chaos Maw, and it's going to deal three more. And in the end, the idea is Chaos Maw is going to be just about the only creature left in play, which will normally win. Thoughts on Apocalypse, Steven? I think it's a demon, and if you are filling your graveyard, then it gets really, really scary. So with all the cycling... Yeah, the cycling, but do you yeah. have any thoughts on uh, what you're going to use to generate something like... Uh, what is that, uh, the... Um, uh, uh, Oh, it's the Scarab, Scarab Feast? What is the one that uh, generates uh, a bunch of little Scarab tokens? Uh, are you talking about the, the, the spell, or are you talking about the Scarab God itself? No, from uh, Amonkhet. Because I'm thinking we yeah. need fodder for, for the demon, otherwise it's just going to you know stay tapped the whole time. Right. Well, here's the thing. It's a six drop, and the idea is by the time you get it out, you have several creatures in play. 
and you have a lot of cards in your graveyard, either through cycling or just through swinging and trading and casting spells along the way. It, it is not a card that's meant to last forever. I really don't think it is. And, and you're going to have things like man lands and, and tokens. And I'm not overly concerned with keeping it in play too long. Maybe a little... Maybe, maybe something with Hippotra? Um, they're just those snakes. There's so many. Apocalypse Demon with Scarab God would be really mean. Ooh, yeah. Just okay, I'll eternalize and then I'll sack that and yeah. Um, all right, my pack, Kefnet's last word. It is a two blue blue. It's just gain control of target nine land per or target artifact creature or enchantment, but your lands don't untap next turn. I'm really unexcited about this card. I like it. I, I would first pick that. I you think, see, I would in certain packs. I would sideboard this and I would bring this in if if I'm playing an opponent that has something like a glory bringer or a god that I want to take, that I'm willing to literally miss a turn at the four mana point. So right in the middle of your match, you're, you're basically losing a turn and your, your stuff doesn't untap. So I have to know my opponent has a bomb for, uh, for me to feel good about I like this. it better than Swarm Intelligence. I'll yeah, Swarm that. Intelligence is terrible. But I did get, if you saw our, our last video, the... The guy with big head and guy with small head reviews on the kids preview. The claim to fame, which is just fantastic, which for one black lets you bring back a creature, CMC two or less, and then oh. for one in a red, give it haste. Oh, you got my the first god, the locust god. There we go. Finally cracking uh, into some god action. The power of the playmat compels let's, let's, you. Let's go right into the sleeves. Ooh. My new co-host, the Lucas God. Oh. oh, do you mean the very cool Nicol Bolas sleeves we got? Absolutely. Um, okay, so I was hoping to follow up the Locust God with a comparably kick-ass card, and uh, I failed spectacularly with Hour of Eternity. Three blue XX to eternalize X creature cards in your graveyard. Basically... I don't like that card. No, it's... It, I don't like it. You it's need, just poop. It's like... You need... If you're, if you're mono blue... You need seven mana... Uh, to, and to, it's to get two, that's to get you two creatures. And it's at sorcery speed. If this was instant <laughs> speed, I think it's instantly a good card because oh. I can leave the mana untapped. It, my opponent will assume I have some kind of counter magic in my hand, and then at the end of their turn, boom, I will flash and, and eternalize one or two creatures and, and get a board state. But at sorcery speed, it is doo doo. It is. I got a foil one in my in my pre release pool, and I was oh. like, I was like, okay, I'm gonna just leave that. Uh, aside it wasn't my promo it was just a oh I like that yeah. I do like that Hour of Devastation yeah it is uh, thematic it is named after the set or the set is named after it and it is just the best board wipe in the set yeah. well, well second I mean, best it's, it's, it's in there be, yeah. uh, I like it because it gets rid of anything that's indestructible I right. definitely that, may, that gets standard play yeah and that gets first picked period Three red red, all creatures lose indestructible until end of turn, and every creature and non nickel bolus planeswalker gets dealt five damage. This is just yep. wiped to dust. And if you do happen to have nickel back in play, oh my god, Ooh. that is just terrible. Ooh. Ooh. Well, I got an uncage the menagerie, oh, which yeah. uh, is another mythic that we got to open here. Uh, you search your library for up to X creature cards with different names that each have converted mana cost X. Reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. Thoughts? Uh, I'm calling shenanigans right now. You've gotten all the mythics and the foil full art land, and I just got a really cool rare. Hey, man. No, thoughts? We, we talked about this in pre-release. Yeah. Uh, in, the, in the preview, Uncaged Menagerie, there are certain moments where you want it more than anything else, especially in uh, you know a deck where you have... Uh, where you build your curve properly. You know, what I'm thinking is, if you have, say, three or four three drops in your deck, then what you really want to do is cast that for five and go get three three drops. And just... So it, it can be really strong. I think I think it will be strong, especially in formats where you've got, uh, like, standard where you have a you generally low curve and you're just going to grab one of each of your of your goodies. Uh, this pack, I got a grind of dust. It is a, a premium piece of removal, in my opinion. Uh, I, I rarely will pick uh, split cards, uh, like pack one, pick one, uh, just because it commits you to at least splash in one of the colors. Yeah. But Grind to Dust is just, 
it's it's good enough that I'm I'm willing to forget about that like hard rule and just go ahead and snap that off without much thought. Well, I also got a split card that pack. I got reason to believe. Reason is yeah. one blue, scry three. It's sorcery speed. I preferred it in, in speed. Yeah. Uh, but believe says for four and a green as an aftermath spell, you can reveal or you can look at the top card of your library, and if you can just put it onto the battlefield if it's a creature card without casting it. Uh, yeah, I uh, I just opened a Scorpion God, so gonna go ahead and uh, really looking forward to doing these sealed pools with yeah. you. So clearly, <laughs> I want pre-release. He won the box opening. I should open all until all I boxes. until I get an invocation and then just, oh. and then just go shiny all over your ass. Did you? No. No. But I, I did. Like I did get a card that I'm a fan of. I got another one of our sifter worm, the seven seven trample guy that gains you life. But I got the zombie demon crocodile, uh, Amid Eternal. It is a five five for two and a black with a flick three. Now a flick is a new mechanic that I really like. It's good. In limited, it says if your opponent blocks this creature, they're still taking however many points of damage a flick says. So in this case, it's a five five that deals three damage if it's blocked. Now. The drawback, because you can't have a 5-5, five, five, a flick 3 for 3. Whenever your opponent casts a spell, put a minus 1, minus 1 counter on Amid Eternal. Now, whenever Amid Eternal deals damage to an opponent, take all of those away. So either they block and take the 3 points of a flick damage and possibly chump block and lose a creature, or you get through, deal damage, lose all the 1-1 one, one counters, and then they have to start trying to deal with it all over again. The only drawback to this is Electrolyze kills it. Because it deals four points of damage and then the extra 1-1 one, one counter yeah. because of the cast. But otherwise, uh, I actually splashed this into my blue-green deck with the two painted deserts that I okay. have that, that make multiple colors. And uh, it does work. Do you think uh, any of these uh, sort of bigger zombies are going to make uh, the zombie deck playable and standard again? Or do you think the Age of Zombies is over? <sighs> Ain't it possible? I, I, I thought it would have a little more legs, but it just seems like it was that initial, like, flash in the pan, aggro deck, like, make a splash, and then it's kind of out. I, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm really curious as to see how the, the GP and Pro Tour results come in, yeah. both for Standard and um, Modern right now. Yeah. Because there's a lot of cards that you can see promise yeah. and you can see how they would, would work. Like, I'm sorry, a 5-5... A five, five, Zombie on turn three, when you still have Liliana in the format, and it's a zombie, it, it seems amazing. Yeah. And, and the speed and the fact that you're going so wide in those zombie decks mean you, you're going to focus on this, which may be a 2-2 two, two or a 3-3, three, three, yeah. and, and all, then take the afflict damage. I mean, you're also dealing with that Plague Belcher from um, and Kent, who's got the 5 form Menace for three. Like yeah. There's just there's a lot of good It's certainly things. possible. I'd like to see it come back because it was a fun deck. Oh, I pulled uh, the Hour of Revelation. So that's the uh, board wipe that costs three less if you've got ten permanent. It's the EDH. Things. It's not just a board wipe. <laughs> it is destroy all non-land permanents. And you can cast it for just three white if there's more than ten permanents, non-land permanents in play. So it is the EDH board wipe. Oh, all oh. right. There's a couple of sweet little guys in this one. Oh, the fun the, look, I got the, the Pride Sovereign Kitty Cat. So we're going to get your cat tribal going. And... Something that is only just flavor, but man, do I like it. A nice foil open fire. Ooh. Yeah, but we're taking the kitty cat pick one. What? What are you talking about, bro? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's not even. And that's just stuff. because the universe isn't always fair, another Ruminat excavator. So we now have two. We have half of our play set of Crucible of Worlds on a stick. Oh, I, opened, I think I opened another one in there as well. So we may have three. Oh, oh yeah, you just failed to mention... Well, come on, man. We already talked about it. But... <laughs> but it's so good. It is good, but it's not like mentioned three times good. It is. We want people to be excited. Look, I'm, I'm not going to just keep mentioning that I've opened the Locust God, the Scorpion God, and Uncakes the Manatee. And just I'm like, just just like I think it would be mean that. to keep pointing out that I beat both you and Austin in one pre-release, even though there were like 60 people there. Like, it just, bro, it, there's no reason bro, that to just keep that was the past. We're in the future now. We're talking about no, what's going we on. we are in the present. Okay, Champion of Wits. <laughs> a blue card that I really like. It's got some uh, good uh, card draw to it, as well as a foil abandoned sarcophagus. So we do have half the play set of, oh, you of Cycle Land. I know, right? Oh, you fancy. So good. All right, I got another split card. He gets the Mythics, I get the split cards in friggin' space. Leave to Chance. For one and a white, return any number of permanents you own to your hand. 
Okay. Just instant speed. I'm going to save my stuff. Oh, your Bantu's last reckoning. Oh, that was so nice. Yeah. Oh, so <laughs> so savory. And then the aftermath says three in a red. Discard any number of cards and then draw that many cards. So let's say I have a bunch of little creatures out. We're late game. My opponent drops something huge, and I need an answer. All right, so I can one in a white, bounce the stuff back at the end of his turn, three in a red, dump a bunch of cards out, draw a lot of stuff, hopefully hit the answer I'm looking for. Uh, I think that's the best use for it. Dream Stealer. Dream Still again. Good. Yeah. Well, speaking of blinking cards, we got the Angel of Condem Condemnation. I like that guy. It's a 3-3 three, three Flying Vigilance for two and a white. That for two, wow. I'm sorry, two and two white. Yeah. But for two and a white, you can tap to exile another creature, and it returns at the... It returns to its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So this is really important. You're going to Kefnet's last stand and take one of my permanents? Okay, I'm going to blink that permanent and it's going to come back under its control, its owner's control. Yeah. So it's a way to get your cards back, but I'm thinking back to that 7-7 seven, seven trample sure. that sure, gains sure. you life and scries. If this is like a really good uh, uh, displacer. You know what this really works against? Eternalized cards. Oh, yeah. Bye. Oh, 4-4 four, four zombie token? Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, and you exiled it as part of the casting. Yeah. All right, these are the last two. So, Invocation, Nickelback. Here we go. This is going to happen right now. You guys are going to bear with me. Uh, I got the Nickelback. There it is! <laughs> yeah! And a claim to fame. So, yeah. so, you were off. So, do you get the Invocation? So do I get the Invocation then? Uh, no, I got, I got, I got the hollow one. <laughs> yeah. So, you got most of the mythics. I just got the good you got one. The, yeah, you got, you yeah. got Nickelback himself. Hey, See, stick with it. I'm going to win. This is what we talk about. All right, about. bro. Well. So yeah. all in all, definitely not a bad box. No, this is a super nice box. We got uh, we got two gods, a nickelback, basically a place set of excavators. Tons of claim to fame. Tons of fun stuff. And, yeah. and I think this is pretty indicative of our devastation in general. There's just, as you're noticing, we're going through... We're not mentioned, no invocations. I mean, yes, we got two gods and nickel bolus, but that's out of 36 packs. There's just a lot of cards that are really functional, especially in a limited format. But I think we see some interesting things that could make waves and completely disrupt standard while... We're, I'm, I'm, I don't think we have anything in this set that's really going to turn modern up on its head, except claim to fame. Well, again, I thought that was going to make a much bigger splash, but even the last uh, tournament results for uh, modern, there was only one Death Shadow in the top eight. Well, let's see. Yeah, we'll see. You know, it, it took a little while for... Uh, Eldrazi ramp to, to get legs also. Oh man, that thing! But that thing. And then nuts. all of a sudden it was yeah. unbeatable, and yeah. it, it of course the ban hammer came out. I still think that that uh, that claim to fame is going to have an yeah. impact. I'm I'm really looking forward to people starting to use that on uh, Snappy, the Snappy oh, Master Mage. No doubt. Yeah. Just like no doubt. The only problem with claim to fame is it's Sorcery. it's well no well yes <laughs> but it's black and red, true as opposed to blue. So now you're running at least a three color deck Princess. if you want to use. I'm aware. Yeah. I'm aware. Um, but yeah, what, what's fun with the Snapcaster is you cast Claim to Fame, you bring back Snapcaster, and then you Snap Claim, <laughs> and you bring back a second card. So it's just one black, and we're going to bring two... Yeah, it's freaking fun. Frickin this fun. was a fun box, man. I was about this. Yeah, I'm, I'm digging Hour of Devastation. It's, it's certainly fun. I have a bit of an issue from a limited standpoint. Okay. All right, I, I don't want to whine, but I feel like there are a few cards. And hand me the rares, because we got several of them in this box. All right, there's a few cards in this set and in Amiket that are just disproportionately strong to yeah. the rest <laughs> the, of the, the format. The gods, the gods shut you down. It's if like if, if you, your opponent yeah. gets one of these three cards in play, Scorpion God, Locust God, or Nicol Bolas, if you can't instantly deal with it, you're pretty screwed. You're just going to lose. Yeah. Glorybringer is another card like that. Hazrat the Fervent is yeah. another card like that. Obviously the green, Ronus the Indomitable. Absolutely yeah. just wins games. Yeah. And, you know, I think back just a few sets back to Origins. There really wasn't like that card that any one card that where it hits the board and all of a sudden your opponents are like, well, I'm effed. This, that was fun. Yeah. Great. I'm scooping. But I got to say, man, on the other side of that spectrum, as somebody who's already done a lot of winning because of those cards, you may be over it. I haven't had the opportunity to do that. Uh, no, I haven't got them. I, I, would <laughs> I would really like to rip a Scorpion God pack one, go Mardu, and just slam that guy down on turn five and just be like, ha-ha. Yeah, still my favorite god for limited, but of course the Locust God, that's my EDH buddy. Uh, the deck is more than halfway built, although I am still looking for 
an invocation to helm the, the whole crew. Yeah, I think there's a, like also a ton of standard playables within within this box. Yeah, I want to see if Afflict becomes a thing in standard. I really like the format. Um, and, and you just have a lot of pieces that kind of work well with decks that are already around. I don't see a whole lot that's going to help out vehicles. No, I think vehicles are done. Even if, yeah. yeah I th I, well, I was wondering when they released this if there was going to be that card that vehicles needed to get back, back on. Back on it, yeah. And I just don't see it. Yeah. And honestly, I'm okay with that. Yeah, so you know, I think zombies and vehicles have... I'm just... I, you know, I find it boring when you go to the game day and you sit there and you look at the final table and five of the people have the same deck. Like yeah. I just, I understand that we live in an era of net decking. I know that everyone likes to win, and and there's skill involved, and it's how you pilot it. And, and but I mean, honestly, you, like you, I, you gotta you gotta study what's out there, man. Yeah, let's, let's be fair. I, I've been playing for 20 years. I started back, you know, in Fallen Empires, and I miss the days where if you went to a tournament, basically every deck was different, and everyone's goal was just to get to their Shiv and Dragon. But <laughs> like I, I miss that, and and I guess it's unavoidable. But anyway, yeah, I, I think. I think we've said it all, at yeah. least as far as this box is concerned. And uh, what do they say? Always leave them wanting more. That's right. Thanks so much for uh, checking this out. Uh, thanks for opening this box with us. Uh, we had a great time. Uh, we didn't fight as much as I promised, but come back and we'll probably make it happen. Yeah, and from the Samut of co-hosts, <laughs> thank you guys. We'll see you next time.